name is Bruce Greco. I'm the Director of Outreach at the Ecological Restoration Institute at Northern Arizona University here in Flagstaff, Arizona. We primarily do research and transfer of that science that we find uh, to practitioners, to land managers, uh, folks that are trying to manage these ecosystems here in the southwestern United States. This forest that we're in here is the largest continuous uh, stand of ponderosa pine in the northern hemisphere. It goes from uh, just south of the Utah border all the way into New Mexico. Uh, and it's really unraveling. There's lots of major problems with sustainability and, and uh, resiliency of, of pines to treatments. And so we're really scrambling right now to, to uh, either understand or find the science that's going to help managers respond at a, at a large landscape scale. So it's, it's a challenge. We're standing in the largest contiguous stand of Ponderosa Pine in the Northern Hemisphere. There's a lot of elevations involved, a lot of uh, aspects and topography, uh, a lot of different soil types. So it's a very uh, diverse, very complex ecosystem. There are different elements that are affecting Ponderosa Pine. I think probably the, the big three, if you will, would be insect and disease. Uh, either primary or, or secondary effects on these trees. Uh, secondly is because there is so much stalking or they are, the stands of, of timber are so dense, they're very prone to wildfire. And uh, we have uh, areas here in the southwest of hundreds of thousands of acres in the last few years that have burned from unwanted wildfire. And, and then I think the third one is just overall effects to uh, heating up, perhaps global warming, uh, drought, other, other effects where these uh, stands are not very resilient, they're not very healthy, and they can't with, withstand these large uh, uh, factors and influences over large areas here on the landscape. What we need to do is, as land managers, in the Ponderosa Pine ecosystems, I think we have to go back probably 140, 150 years and look at those ranges of variability of natural conditions of what happened and what has changed since then. And that really gives us a blueprint or a pattern to, to know what we need to do to get those stands back into conditions that they're resilient to insect and disease, that they're not fire prone, and that they really are healthy and sustainable for the future. I think one of the biggest factors that have changed in the last 150 years, particularly in these Ponderosa Pine ecosystems, is taking fire out of the ecosystem. These ecosystems of Ponderosa Pine here are very dependent on fire, natural fire, low intensity fire, and frequent fire that goes through these landscapes. When these areas and these lands were settled back in the 1860s, 1870s, that natural fire was stopped, it was suppressed, and that's why we have these very dense Ponderosa Pine stands today. This is a, an example of a fire scar from a dead Ponderosa Pine tree from the Coconino National Forest. And uh, we use this type of research of understanding the importance of the role of fire in these ecosystems. And this research helps us to understand the history of fire in this particular forest. This sample shows that this came from a tree that uh, was established back in about 1770. So the tree uh, is several hundred years old. And by research, we know that by looking at every time fire burned in this particular area where this tree was, it's recorded on the outside of the cambium or the bark of this particular tree. We, we know that fire was excluded from these ecosystems just about 1865 to 1870 when the area was uh, established uh, 
pioneers came here and, and it was populated. This particular uh, sample here from 1860 to 63 was the last, excuse me, 1873 was the last fire that occurred. At the time that the fire was excluded, these individual lines are the annual growth of this particular tree. And it was growing very well. It uh, didn't have the competition. It didn't have the factors that I talk about of being prone to large fire or insect and disease. But once fire was excluded from this particular site, we see that these annual rings or the annual growth of this tree tapered off dramatically. The lines are very, very close together, a lot of competition, a very suppressed, unhealthy condition for this particular tree that may indeed have led or caused uh, factors of its demise to kill this particular tree. We have uh, Ponderosa pine here in the northern Arizona area, upwards of 650 to 675 years old, that are still very healthy, that are growing very vigorously, but they're in areas that have had continual fire or they had management to help them to be resilient and, and not have the effects of insect and disease or large catastrophic wildfires affect them. And we see this tree after tree. If we look at fire scars here, we'll see that fire affected every tree in the National Forest. 